Winterizing your homestead is a really important part of homesteading. And winterizing can look a little bit different for each and every homestead. Each and every homestead has different animals. <clears throat> we have different situations. We have different temperatures and climates that we live in. And so ultimately what my form of winterizing on my homestead looks like isn't necessarily going to look the same for you. Now, in our case, we live in Virginia. And so we have... We can have really frigid winters and we can have really mild winters. It just depends on the day. <laughs> so for us, we right now, right this instance, um, our greatest factor, our greatest issue with winterizing is the wind. Um, because we live down a steep hillside, the wind just cuts through our hutches and our coop. And so we have to find ways um, to really cut back on that to really protect our animals from that. Um, now we do not believe in offering supplemental heat. We believe that we can provide an environment for our animals that allows them to warm themselves naturally without being under any stress. So we don't use heat lamps. We don't use heaters of any kind. Now for my quail back here, you saw me put the Christmas lights in. That's because quail are really temperamental when it comes to lighting and laying. And this is my first year having quail, and so I was really trying to um, buff up my my quail stock. And so right now I am going to add supplemental lighting to them because I need to hatch more eggs. Um, and so we add the stand of Christmas tree lights because it's not invasive upon them and we're going to keep them going all the time. We do this because, like I said, it's not an invasive light. It's not like there's a really bright light in there where they can't feel comfortable. This is just a really small amount of light. Um, we will probably turn it off during the day, but it'll stay on in the evening and dark hours. Our other form of winter winterization to help keep them warm be lots and lots of straw and this tarp back here that you saw me putting on will keep the wind from coming down this side of the hill um, their hutch goes down this way down the hill and so we have the tarp on this side so that the the wind cannot get to them um, between the tarp the lighting which can put off a little bit of heat and the straw that we'll put into one side of the hutch that way we can keep up with keeping it clean it'll keep them more than warm enough this winter is here they're a little bit different because these guys they're actually facing away from the direction that the wind normally comes and so we don't really need to have a tarp for them on the really cold days we will manually come down here and we'll close over just this one part unless it's really frigid where the wind chill is like excruciating which we've had some winters like that then we'll cover the whole part but we like for them to have sunlight we place this rabbit hutch strategically in the sun in the morning sun you can see that all this rabbit hutch gets the morning sun in the, in the morning time and so we, we did that strategically so that they would get the morning sun warmth um, on this side especially especially when we have babies chicken coop is a little bit different because the chickens have a huge gigantic coop to sleep in. Our coop has this really big door so it really helps keep the cold wind and air out. We do have this window up here and it helps keep ventilation in but we're able to control the ventilation by opening and closing that window. Now we use the deep litter method and this method has worked really well for us in past years. This year we're using a combination of cardboard bedding and straw and this allows us to have maximum heat but also maximum absorption from the feces that fall. Uh, the deep litter method works really really well. Basically what happens is when you use deep litter you're using permaculture basically. Um, you are allowing the natural bacteria to work itself and it creates a heat inside your coop. And so that natural heat helps keep your chickens warm in the wintertime. 
and we are really excited about that. It has worked for many years for us. We we enjoy it very much. It's, as long as you maintain it, basically what you do is you put your bedding down. You don't have to use cardboard or straw. You can use pine needles and leaves or, or something like that. But as long as you stir it every day, it works really well. You see that bag of sweet PDZ back there? If ever we have a hot day and it starts to get a little stinky, we just sprinkle some of that sweet PDZ over it and it takes care of that ammonia and cuts it out. Deep litter should last at least three to four months in your coop, depending on how wet it is that season. As long as you maintain it and stir it every single day, it should work like a charm. The other good thing about deep litter is that your chickens will actually help you turn it over. So in the winter times, sometimes we just throw in some, you know, some dry food scraps like corn or, or peas, or you can just sprinkle their feed in here and they'll scratch it up for you. All these precautions naturally should really help keep your chickens warm. Lots of straw, lots of natural elements to keep your chickens warm. You should not have to use a heat lamp or any kind of supplemental heat as long as you keep up with them and maintain them. However, it's always nice to have a backup plan. This is my backup plan. You've seen me talk about this before. We call this our mini coop. And basically, we have it as our outdoor brooder when we have chicks, but also in the winter time, I'll stuff this full of straw and I'll keep the door open so that if ever one of our chickens gets out of the run or coop at night or during the day and doesn't get put back up, <clears throat> then they have this coop to keep them warm. And so basically, it's our emergency coop. It helps keep them warm and safe if ever they get out. Um, when we were free ranging a lot, we didn't have to put the chickens up at night because we didn't have a big predator issue. But we did have one evening where we put the chickens up in the run, but they ended up, one of them ended up getting out that evening and he ended up freezing to death because he couldn't get back in. So during that time, that's when we really had this mini coop and it really helped out a lot. We've never had that issue ever since because obviously we do night checks. We were newbies back then. But we do keep this open for any animals that might get out or that need safety or shelter during the winter time. We firmly believe that if you implement safe environmental factors into your home setting, that your animals won't need supplemental heat this winter either. But if you live in an area that gets down below, way below zero, then you might consider a small coop heater or something like that. Just keep in mind that animals self-regulate their body temperature. So if you're trying to help them regulate their body temperature, it can do a lot more harm than good. So for that reason, we simply do not suggest supplemental heat for your animals. We often get asked the question, what do you do? What do you do about rooster combs? Well, in the past, uh, rooster combs have been not an issue for us because we've gotten roosters that don't have extremely large combs and so therefore they fare better in the wintertime. However, you can always put Vaseline on their combs, but as long as your coop is warm and there's not a lot of moisture inside, you shouldn't really need to do that. If your rooster or other hens get frostbite on their combs, we highly suggest using black salve and it's an ointment that you can put on it's all natural and it really works wonders for our chickens if, if ever they've gotten a little bit of frostbite on their combs but otherwise if you're maintaining their heat naturally with straw deep dirt met our deep litter method and um, natural warmth and give them access to places where they can create their own warmth then I think you're gonna see a great health benefit in your animals and know that you don't have to use supplemental heat this winter either so there are some tips on our winterizing that we go through here, just for the animals, not for the gardens or anything. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Lots of you that watch aren't subscribed, and we'd really love for you to subscribe so that you can get updates on every video that we post. Um, if you comment, keep it nice. And if you'd like to share, please do. If you have any tips, also, we are open to sharing those too. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Happy homesteading.